compromise we would be willing to accept? What do you think the understanding should be we need bipartisanship, we need a willingness on their part to compromise. That's where the discussion needs to begin. We all have to amendments to that one bill. I mean, what? Okay, we're putting, uh, if we were to run those ideas, those amendments in front of the voters of Ohio, they would say, well, sounds reasonable to me. If they would see this bill, I don't think they'd have the same reaction. So, in, not to demean your question at all, I understand where you're coming from with your question. I'm just saying that, you know, it takes two to dance. Uh, we've got our dancing shoes on. Uh, right now, they just want to step on our toes, and uh, they're not willing to compromise or dance or meet us in the middle. You know, the majority, we've said this over and over again, we realize we're in the minority, but you know, we can still get things done working together. We can still compromise. But there has to be a willingness to do that. And I just don't see that. This is my first day on this committee. And I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, but boy, it's going to be interesting going forward because I just do not see a willingness to work together being demonstrated on this committee. We have a chairman who talks about bipartisanship. Public, right, in committee. And then there's no bipartisanship. There's no willingness to negotiate at all on anything. Even if it's a good idea, he even said the one and then, ah, that's a pretty, something we need to look at. We can ramrod everything else through, but we can't get online registration. So, I, and even more, and his own party has introduced the bill to do it. But it's not the right time. It has to be on their time. And even so, it is extremely frustrating. <laughs> if I'm remembering right, it's a bill that, that Demo House Democrats passed in 2000, I think it was 10, uh, reduced, got rid of the Golden Week, and also, also required there be uh, weekend voting. I mean, is that something that you've discussed as bringing forward as a potential uh, compromise uh, option in this? That, you know, you get some guarantees, you get some Saturday and Sundays. But, you know, particularly the ones right before the election in exchange for shortening early voting. Jim, I think that that question, again, presumes that we're dealing with uh, uh, the other side that, that actually wants to have a discussion and communication with our side of the aisle on these issues. And they've just, you know, we offer amendments, we send letters, we talk to them, uh, you know, before and after committee and during the floor, and there's just no glimpse of a uh, real effort uh, to work with us on these voting issues. Voting issues above all other issues should be bipartisan. Uh, it should be something that, you know, just like our boards of elections are bipartisan, we should work together uh, to get legitimate election reforms passed. And you just don't see any of that. So we have offered a lot of uh, potential amendments and solutions that we think are very important. And you see how they're treated. They're immediately tabled, no discussion, they're, we're locked. I mean, it's it's a terrible, terrible process. I think we'd be able to make more progress on these bills if the Secretary of State would actually make an appearance. You know, I use the analogy, and you know, Groundhog Day, the Groundhog at least comes out once a year to say we've seen a shadow. I think the Secretary of State should at least come out once a year and speak out on voter suppression bills. You know, he's a Republican, the majority. You know, if he stepped forward and said, Hey, I've got problems with this. This causes heartburn. This isn't good for the voters. That would certainly help with our cause. But we simply cannot get the Secretary of State to even come to this committee. Is that not his responsibility? Where is he? He's absent. He's absent on the job. Regardless of whether it's an idea that you think Republicans would accept, I mean, is it something you could accept as an idea? Well, sure. Gu guaranteed weekends in exchange for short. No, I mean, I, I don't see why we would put a bill out there uh, that. We're, we don't believe that we should be uh, shortening the time frame. We don't believe in that. And, but if, if, if we have another, the other side wants to come in and say, we understand your position, what would you give if we give here? Then you've got something to bargain with. But for us to put out something that we're already giving up something, you never negotiate already short yourself. You go in and ask for more. That's how you bargain. And, and we surely, we're not in a bargaining position, so we're surely not going to go offer something less. It's just, it's just
from a, from a common sense approach, and after sitting through this committee this year, we're willing to we're willing to bargain. They're not. So you have to start from the premise of and we believe that more voter access is good for the voters of Ohio. Right. They believe their premise is that more voter access isn't good for Ohio. We've seen that because more of voters, our voter, early it access. depends on the right who the voter is. Right. So, you know, as I said before, we want to see a situation where as many people in Ohio can vote as possible, make it as convenient for them to be able to vote. Um, you know, I know I always vote early because sometimes I have to be down here on election day. I'm worried one of these days I'm going to drive down here and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to drive back and, and vote. And I've known some of my colleagues who have done that, whose names will remain names. Uh, but it's actually happened. And so, you know, people live very busy lifestyles. I don't even have a wife and kids and soccer practice and piano practice. And people have a lot of things to do. But most people, according to one of the bills, they can't get to a board of elections by 4 o'clock. No, that's unrealistic. There's a reason why banks are in shopping centers now. There's a reason why banks have longer hours. They know that people cannot come in their door by 4 o'clock or 